Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good day, sir. Good day, mate. Good morrow. How you doing? Hey there. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna use this router table right now. Gotta set it up. This is one of the old doors and this is the rabbit that the hinge sits on and it's actually too deep. You can kind of see a gap down there. So uh, when I make the new ones, I'll make that a little bit shallower. There's a bolt down in here that I use to operate my router lift. And then I've got this little socket that just raises and lowers it. It's real handy. I'm gonna start with it about there. It's a little bit lower. I'm gonna run a test. I need to open up this split fence a little bit. I've got some wing nuts on the back here that I can just loosen and then this slides back. Looks like I actually went too deep still, so I need to make it a little bit shallower. Now that looks like a good fit. Uh, after all that setup, I'm gonna have to switch to the dado blades on my table saw. My bit keeps slipping on this router. So here was the first door I cut and it worked out perfectly. But then on the second door, this was the second one. I was cutting, 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 and look what happens when it gets down to this edge. It's just getting so thin. So the the bit was actually slipping upwards, causing this to make that deep of a cut. On my third attempt, I reset the bit, I cinched down that bit really tight, and I took shallow passes, about three passes to get to that final depth, and it still slipped. It got way narrower on this side. Sorry for the noise, they're doing some work out on the street. Anyways, I've experienced this before and it seems to be always with a three quarter inch or a big router bit. I've experienced it on the table and I've experienced it on a handheld router. Years ago when I first encountered this, I learned that the router bit shouldn't go all the way into the collet. If it's completely bottomed out into the collet, it can slip up. So I've always made a practice of dropping the bit in and then just backing it off just a little bit. So that wasn't the problem here. Obviously, it was tight enough. That wasn't the problem. On my third attempt, I thought, well, maybe I was just trying to hog out too much material at once. So I took shallow passes, still have the problem. It might just be specific to this router. This is a Porter Cable router. It's a really good router. I've had it for a while. Maybe it's just aging. But it could also be that I'm pushing the limits to how much a quarter inch router can handle, or in other words, the size of bit that it can handle. I'm pretty sure if I had a half inch router, and that's the diameter of the shaft on the bit, that thicker, beefier router probably wouldn't have had this problem. At any rate, it's a very frustrating thing when it happens because I never catch it until it's too late and I've already ruined the workpiece. But let me know, any of you who have a router, if you've ever experienced this and what might be the cause beyond what I've already described. But whatever, I don't really wanna mess with it now. So I'm gonna set up a dado stack on my table saw and cut these out in short order. I'm gonna still leave this out because I wanna do those roundovers on the edges and I know it can handle that kind of a cut. This gets me every time. It's almost completely overflowing before I notice. By the way, in general, you can compost your sawdust. It's something you could do with it, but I don't do that with sawdust out of my shop vac just because there's so much other stuff in there, including plywood. 
I don't know if it's okay to compost plywood or not. My guess is it's probably not the best thing to compost just because of the glue that's binding all those layers together. Another thing to consider is if you're cutting different types of wood, some types of wood you just really don't want to compost, like walnut for instance, is apparently not good for plants at all. But yeah, it's real tempting just to dump that into the compost, that'd be really nice. And there's all four doors with the rabbits cut in them. And yeah, I should have just set that dado stack up in the first place. It's so much easier to set up and faster and than dealing with the router. On the plus side, I didn't need to cut any extra doors because I had two leftovers. Remember in the last video when I miscalculated how many doors I would be needing? Well, when I cut these out, I had two extra ones and so, or a space for two extra ones. So I thought, well, I might as well just cut those out to size. Who knows if I need them? Here we go. Good morning. Good day. Hello. How are you? Hey, how's it going? What's up? Howdy. Hi, y'all. It's a new day. You can tell it's a new day because I got a different color shirt on and it's not gray. I have to edit these videos using a couple days worth of footage because, you know, otherwise it really makes me look kind of lame. Like the only thing I did yesterday was, was make those dados. Well, actually they were rabbits. And well, yeah, pretty much that was all I did yesterday. Oh wait, I had to do, a, I had a video conference I had to do. I had to play with the cats. I had to take the cats outside and watch them. I had to work out. But in my actual project videos, I'm very conscious of that. I, and I, I don't wanna give people the idea that I'm not doing anything. So I'll, I'll actually wear the same shirt for a couple of days in a row, you know. I'm lying to you, it's all a lie. Well, that guy sure does get a lot of work done in one day. You could tell because he's wearing the same shirt. Actually, I also kind of stopped early yesterday because it, it just wasn't a good day. I mean, first I had the whole router thing happen and then my microphone died. For some reason, this microphone, it charges itself while the camera's on somehow, but every once in a while it dies and I have to actually plug it into a, you know, one of those mini USBs. Not very often, like maybe once every other month or something. But I'll be just recording and talking and talking and then all of a sudden I'll play it back and it's just me. And that's exactly what happened. So I had to go charge that up and I'm sitting around waiting for that. So do you know what I did is I recorded a couple of those shots just using the on-camera microphone. If you ever hear that really echoey sound, I mean more echoey than it is here, that's because I'm using that on-camera on mic, the one built into the camera. Oh, and then I had my, my memory card screwed up on me and I lost footage. It wasn't important footage. And you know, over 12 years of making videos, I have never lost footage. You know, I hear people say that and they'll put in a card like, I lost all my footage or something, but I've never had that happen. I've had some times, and I think the reason why is because I don't record the entire video on one card. I shoot a couple of scenes and then I go up and then I just don't finish the You stretch out a video just by talking about the video itself. It's very meta. I took these doors up to the cabinet to see how well they will fit. And it seems like they're a little bit snug on the top and the bottom. I'd rather have a little bit more breathing room there. I think that'll be easier to hang them. And I'm not that concerned about the width because if they're too, too big, I can always cut a little bit off of this side. That'll be no problem. But for now, I just wanna make this rabbit a little extra big. I'm gonna position these hinges a little bit further in than the old hinges. That way I won't have to try to line these up with those existing holes. What I wanna do is attach these doors first before I make the round over and paint them and all that, just so I make sure I've got a good fit. I always like to cut a little strip or just use a piece of cardboard or something to shim them up a little bit so that I know that they're not gonna be riding along the bottom and scraping against it. And since I made those two rabbits a little bit oversized, that should work out well. Right on the corner. I'm gonna see if I can repair that. I'm gonna save that little chunk. Well, one thing I'll do is I'll put that one on the upper side here, so maybe it won't be as visible. Getting them both even is the tricky part and to make sure that they're not twisted in any way. 
All right, I brought all the doors back into my shop. First thing I wanna do is see if I can sort of repair where that got crushed. Here's a piece that broke off, so at least I can glue that back on. I think what I'm gonna do is just dump a bunch of glue on this and then squish everything together. I can live with that. I'm not throwing away my shot. I'm not throwing away my shot. Anybody else have that song stuck in your head? Throwing away my shot. I just, I can't find the end of it. Well, I gotta say this corner repair Turned out pretty good. Here's what it looks like on the front side. It's basically invisible, and especially since this will be up in the top corner, you won't see it at all. Hey there. Hello, how are you? I'm doing great, how are you? What deer. Yeah, pick it up? Yeah. Every plant there, the deer will just pick up. Anything we put in the front yard, the deer just want to eat. Jesse, what did the house say? Hey, what happened? It was super warm. Let's see the Thanks a lot. I still need to put a second coat of paint on these doors. I need to let this dry. If you want, we can sit around and watch that paint dry. Anyway, I think I'll go finish editing this film. I'll upload it to YouTube. And I, I don't know why I said film, it's a video, right? I don't think I've ever called my videos a film. But I do film my projects because I think that to, is, as a verb is still valid because you can't video something, it, it, well you could. And some people say they're videoing something, but it's real awkward sounding. So I think film is just, it's trans, transcended. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna leave you guys alone, bye.